Welcome to the Episcopal Church of Our Savior of Madison County on this first Sunday after Christmas and New Year's Eve. Whether you join us in the beauty of the sanctuary or you follow us on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel, we are all united together in Christ's love. This morning, we are having a morning prayer service followed by the Holy Eucharist. So it will be a spoken service. Our service begins on page 75 of the Book of Common Prayer. Using morning prayer right to it. Behold, the dwelling of God is with mankind. He will dwell with them, and they will shall be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. Turning now to page 79. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others, those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation, and so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, as it well was as the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the Jubilat on page 82. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Please be seated for the readings. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 147. Uh, which you will find beginning on page 804 in the prayer book. And we will read it responsively by whole verse. <clears throat> Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God! How pleasant it is to honor him with praise! The Lord rebuilds Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He counts the number of stars and calls them all by their names. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. There is no limit to his wisdom. The Lord lifts up the lowly, but casts the wicked to the ground. 
Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make music to our God upon the harp. He covers the heavens with clouds and prepares rain for the earth. He makes grass to grow upon the mountains and green plants to serve mankind. He provides food for flocks and herds and for the young ravens when they cry. He is not impressed by the might of a horse. He has no pleasure in the strength of a man. But the Lord has pleasure in those who fear him, in those who await his gracious favor. Worship the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise your God, O Zion. For he has strengthened the bars of your gates. He has blessed your children within you. He has established peace on your borders. He satisfies you with the finest wheat. He sends out his command to the earth, and his word runs very swiftly. He gives snow like wool. He scatters hoarfrost like ashes. He scatters his hail like breadcrumbs. Who can stand against his hope? He sends forth his word and melts them. He blows with his wind and the waters flow. He declares his word to Jacob, his statutes and his judgments to Israel. He has not done so to any other nation. To them he has not revealed his judgments. Hallelujah. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God. For he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until her vindication shines out like the dawn, and her salvation like a burning torch. The nations shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. And you shall be called by a new name that the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We're going to follow this reading with a canticle on page 87 of the prayer book. It is the third song of Isaiah. And we will read it together in unison. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has dawned upon you. For behold, darkness covers the land, deep gloom enshrouds the peoples. But over you the Lord will rise, and his glory will appear upon you. Nations will stream to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawning. Your gates will always be open. By day or night, they will never be shut. They will call you the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Violence will no more be heard in your land, ruin or destruction within your borders. You will call your walls salvation and all your portals praise. The sun will no more be your light by day, by night you will not need the brightness of the moon. The Lord will be your everlasting light, and your God will be your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, 
crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will read together the Song of Zechariah, the traditional canticle for morning prayer. It is on page 92 in the prayer book. <clears throat> Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High. Prepare his way. To give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Savior according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life. And the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. Hallelujah! How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. Well, my beloved friends, it is still Christmas. Today, we celebrate the seventh of the 12 days of Christmas. And I hope that the celebration of the birth of Jesus, the Christ child, was joyful for you and all your family. Perhaps you are like me and you like to read books. Well, the best books are those that are never out of print and are continuously reprinted because they are so popular. Well, the Bible is perhaps the best example of this. But another example is a children's book called The Carrot Seed by Ruth Krauss. It was first published 80 years ago during World War II. And this delightful children's story is about a little boy who planted a carrot seed. His mother and father and older brother all didn't believe that anything would come of this. Nevertheless, this little boy faithfully pulled out the weeds and watered the plant. Then one day, a carrot came up just as the boy had known it would. And to everyone's surprise, the carrot had grown larger than the boy. I like this story because it teaches us about patience and hope. And our lectionary readings today are about Christian hope and praising God for all that God can make possible. In the reading from the Hebrew prophet Isaiah, we hear him praising and giving thanks for all that God can make possible. Years earlier, the 
Israelites had been taken as captives into the land of strangers in Babylon. Their freedom came years later and the descendants of the original exiles returned to their homeland in Jerusalem. This story of liberation is recounted in today's psalm that we read. The psalm and the reading in Isaiah are both songs of praise and thanksgiving for what God can make possible. And it's similar to the words of praise that we sing each Sunday in our doxology when we say, praise God from whom all blessings flow. I imagine that some of the ancient Israelites that were exiled for so many years in Babylon doubted that they would ever be able to return to Jerusalem. And in a way, they were very much like that little boy's mother, father, and older brother who doubted that that tiny carrot seed would amount to anything. And as so often is true in our lives, things do not always go as smoothly or as quickly as we would like. The people of Israel had a promise that God would free them from exile and allow them to go home to prosper and grow. However, Jerusalem by that time was not the same as Jerusalem had once been. After years of raids by the invading Babylonians, much of Jerusalem had been destroyed and lay in ruins. There was poverty, <coughs> hunger, and a lot of hard work ahead to rebuild the city. It is much like what we are witnessing today in Gaza. Life is often one of mixed blessings. Both good and bad things can happen in our lives. But we can always have hope because we know that God is always present and actively working in our lives and in the world, even if in ways that we do not understand or can see. I imagine that when the Israelites did return to Jerusalem after their long exile, they were a bit overwhelmed by the destruction that had taken place. At that time, they had no way of knowing the full extent of what God could happen in the future. Like that little boy who did not give up hope and who continued to work. The Israelites who returned to Jerusalem rolled up their sleeves and rebuilt their city. As they began to see the fruits of their hard labor, I imagine that they were like that little boy who was excited when he saw the first green shoots poking up through the ground. He did not know at that time the amazing carrot would grow and grow and eventually become bigger than he was as a little boy. Often, God's actions in the world are like that. When we're facing difficult circumstances and feel discouraged, we can look for the green shoots, look for the signs of new life. In the words of the prophet Isaiah, for as the earth brings forth the shoots and as the garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. We can look for signs of what God can make possible. God makes possible things far beyond what we can expect or imagine. Jerusalem was eventually rebuilt and became a crown of beauty in the land of the Lord, just as Isaiah had prophesied. Our ancient Jewish ancestors could not have known at that time that the best was yet to come with the birth of Jesus in a lowly manger in Bethlehem. 600 years in the future. God entered 
into the world in a new way in the flesh and blood of a little baby Jesus. And God continues to work for the good of all God's people and nations. In the poetic words of the pro prologue of John's Gospel, he described this momentous event in world history as the birth of Jesus by saying, all things came into being through him, and without him, not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. This is a powerful message of Christian hope and God's ability to overcome darkness with the light of Christ. Through the life of Jesus, his words and his actions, we see the will of God lived out in the world. Even in the midst of all the darkness and horror of what's happening in Gaza, there are signs of hope. Many people of many different faiths and traditions around the world are calling for an end to the war and are contributing generously, financially and in other ways to a wide range of agencies and medical personnel on the ground that are providing much needed assistance. People are sacrificing greatly to remain there, to provide medical care, to transport the elderly and frail, to provide temporary shelter, to teach the children, and to help in so many other ways. Neighbors are helping neighbors, and families are opening their homes to provide shelter to those fleeing from the bombing. Politicians and diplomats are working around the clock to free, work, free the hostages and negotiate a ceasefire and an end to the war. Human history has shown us that even in the bleakest of circumstances and most chaotic times, God is present and good and faithful people around the world respond with compassion, kindness, mercy, and generosity in supporting efforts to heal the sick and injured, feed the hungry, shelter the homeless, and welcome the stranger. This is what we as Christians and all people of faith are called to do. The powerful message of Christian hope and all that God can make possible is especially important as we approach the beginning of a new year. With God's help, amazing things will continue to happen in our mission and ministry here, in our own lives, and around the world. Christian hope is based on what God can make possible regardless of the circumstances. Christian hope is grounded in the faithfulness of God. And often it's only when we look back that we recognize the marvelous things God can make possible that we thought were impossible. This evening, we will be celebrating New Year's Eve. And it's a good time to give thanks for all the blessings of the past year and to anticipate with great hope the blessings to come in the new year. So I invite you to do two things. I would like you to think of all the good things that happened this past year and give thanks to God. I also invite you to write down one thing you hope for the new year and write a prayer to God about that and put it in a jar to keep. And then next year, on New Year's Eve, open up that jar and reread the prayer that you wrote. I promise you that your prayer will be answered, perhaps not in exactly 
the way you expected or at the time you wanted, but it will be answered. God has always been with us and will remain with us. And this is the foundation of our Christian hope. And hope is an essential part of our faith as Christians. I firmly believe that the best is yet to come. Like that little boy who planted the carrot seed, let us dream together with great hope and excitement about all that God can make possible, working with all of us in the new year. Let me close with this New Year prayer attributed to the great theologian and mystic Howard Thurman. Teach me to know that life is ever on the side of the future. Keep alive in me the future look, the high hope. Let me not be frozen either by the past or the present. Grant me, O patient one, your sense of the future without which all life would sicken and die. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able as we say together the Nicene Creed. <laughs> We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he gave them from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge by baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. As we celebrate with joy the birth of Jesus, let us offer prayers to God who gathers his sons and daughters in a holy family. By the birth of the timeless Son of God in the womb of the Virgin Mary. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For Mark, our bishop, Carol, our priest, for presbyters and deacons, and all who minister in Christ, and for all the holy people of God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For all believers who put their trust in the incarnate Son of God. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the leaders of the nations and all in authority and for peace and justice. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For the conversion of the whole human race to our blessed Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For travelers, for the sick and the suffering, for the hungry and the oppressed, for those in prison and for the dying and the dead. May they rest eternally and rise in glory. Glory and praise to you, O living God. For our deliverance from all affliction, strife, and need. Glory and praise to you, O living God. Remembering our most glorious and blessed Virgin Mary and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. To you, O Lord. 
In our parish, we pray for Lisa Kilborn and family, Marilyn, Trish, Scott, Karen, Glenn, Eva, Mary Alice, Hayden and Hannah, Linda, Marshall, Tracy, Brian, Kathy, Arlene, Mac, Ruth, Sally, Jamie, Kathy, Richard, Jim, Leslie, David, Mark and Andrea, James, Catherine, Leo, Beth, and Bob. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the Church of the Nativity, Maysville, the Reverend Roxanne Ruggles, Rector. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Rwanda. In Madison County, we pray for all churches and their members. God of all families and peoples, accept the prayers we offer in this joyful season. As we welcome this mystery of your love, may we delight in our joy as children and heirs of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, you have poured upon us the new light of your incarnate word. Grant that this light enkindled in our hearts may shine forth in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. O God, you made us glad with the weekly remembrance of your glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, Drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. birthdays or anniversaries to celebrate? I know it's Shirley Bennett's wedding anniversary today, so we'll have to be sure to give her a blessing when she returns. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and praise to God.
gracious and loving God, I ask that you bless these gifts that have been offered in love and sacrifice and support of the mission of your church and the ministry of our parish. Amen. Our service continues with Eucharistic prayer B found on page 367. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <coughs> Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Savior Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and blood of his new covenant. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, through whom we are acceptable to him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary and Joseph and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ, and with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. 
Give us to save our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and from the world's evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Love Christ, the cup of salvation. <laughs> the blood of Christ is the cup of salvation. The blood of Christ is the cup of salvation.
let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world of peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of our heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May God, who in the Word made flesh, join heaven and earth, and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. Our worship is complete. Our service in the world begins. Let us go in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 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 And be sure to join us next week as we will joyfully welcome Bishop um, Mark Van Coovering, who will be here next Sunday.